because this is what we're doing with the controller is we're trying to discover whether it's capable of actually driving it at the full frequency that we're asking. Uh, so the full frequency that we're asking about is um, it's actually higher isn't it? Is going to be 460 field rotations per second and if you look at the so that's field cycle count you may be able to make it out it's at around about 500 so we're slightly above the RPM needed okay so this software is now being worked faster than slightly faster than it needs to be about 500 okay and as you can see for the most part it's actually okay but there's the odd glitch and if you see the LED in there as well usually flicks on when you've got a field lock there you go so what's happening here is you're basically getting a clashing of interrupts <coughs> right, don't know why that did that um, okay so what we're saying there is and this is this is for a 12 step sequence so we're now running a 12 step sequence at the maximum speed which we probably wouldn't do because we'd probably run to a 6 step at the very least maybe even a 3 step you know, but we can certainly do a six step sequence, right? Now if I now reduce it, okay, so that's at about 280, okay. Now what that is, is that's simulating a six step because I basically reduced the frequency by half, which is what would happen in a six step. And it's still kicking a little bit. Now, bearing in mind that this is now under a PWM controller, right, there's no sensor input at all. If it was in a real motor, what would happen is what these glitches would do is it would then pass over, basically it would just simply skip a sensor reading or a field calculation and, and then carry on the motor. So whilst it's obviously not great, because we could do with getting rid of those, and I can find out how to get rid of those, and for the most part it's working fine, it's just the odd glitch, you see. and in terms of a shoot through or something, right? Yes, it is possible for the software to glitch and do a shoot through. I mean, it'd be anyway, but I'm going to wire the electronics so that it wouldn't allow that to happen anyway. So you wouldn't get a glitch uh, going through to the electronics. So any software glitches which cause shoot throughs, and I don't know if there are any, and I don't think it is the case. It's not locking like in two places at the same time, it seems, right? But any software glitches would be removed by the electronics. So we can't have a shoot through. Um, the worst thing that could possibly happen is that it attempts to just simply lock the field, which wouldn't cause problems with the IGBTs, but it might cause mechanical issues. <coughs> so you know, this is just thinking aloud. What we could do with doing basically is to find out a way of getting that down. So oh, it's still cold. We've got a mark space ratio of five percent. Okay. Now, I can, like, alter the mark space ratio. Okay. In fact, what I can do is reduce the voltage on the power pack, right, to something that's not going to hurt anything. Like, that's three volts. And then increase the mark. Uh, oops. And then that. Okay. So, bearing in mind at high speed, we're probably going to be doing more mark. So, if I put it at a 50% mark instead, So that's now at 600. Okay, that's 600 field rotates, way above it, what we need. And as you can see now, you can just hear a little bit of noise. Okay, but that's just a little bit of a roughness more than anything. Right, so that's 50% mark space ratio. Before, when it was kicking around, I was on a 10% mark space ratio. As you can see now, it's it's actually 48%. Okay. <coughs> this is a 12-step sequence. This is the one, the faster one that we wouldn't use. We'd probably use a six-step. And as you can see, it is quite happily coping with that, isn't it? 50% mark space ratio. That means we will probably be giving it. Um, this would be. So if it's a 30, 30 kilowatt motor, this would be giving it six, about half of that. So that would be 15 kilowatts. I think 
that if we're actually running it at full speed, then it would be more, it would pretty much be no space and all mark. So let's just do that. Increase the mark. Oops, wrong one. Let's turn it right. And then reduce the space. So that's 94% mark now. And it's not, not too happy about that. Okay. So now we're on 88% mark. Okay, so that's going to be, it's nearly 90%, isn't it? So nearly 90% mark would give you, and you can hear it, there's a little bit of interference with the, with the interrupts. But on the most part, that's a pretty cool note, isn't it? 88% mark, which is actually warming up that spindle now because we're giving it three, there's three volts on the power supply mm. and we're actually delivering 88% of that which is, well, I don't know if it was 84 that would be 11 twelfths wouldn't it, is that right? No, 96 would be 11, so it's 10 twelfths, so it's 5 sixths yes, about 5 sixths okay, 3 volts 5 sixths of 3 volts is um, 2.5 isn't it? So that's actually running at 2.5 volts. Uh, 5 sixths to 30 kilowatts is 25 kilowatts. So that means that will be delivering 25 kilowatts. Okay. So this is run. This will be running, and you can see that it's running at uh, 5, 6, 8 field cycles. Right. That actually would be the equivalent of somewhere around 120 miles an hour. Right. But because of the fact that we're using an 88% mark space ratio, it wouldn't actually manage that. It's only a 30 kilowatt motor. <coughs> you know, if it was like a, a 50 kilowatt, it might do. Okay, but a 30 kilowatt motor would not make... So it'd never go that fast, in other words. You'd never have that frequency. It would be a lower frequency. And that's... There's a little bit of glitching going on, but not much. I think what it is, is that when we had it as 10% mark, right, there was very little mark, you see. So if it glitched and it actually locked it into a mark then that means it's, it's actually kicking it because it's then putting 100% from 10% whereas now we're on about 88% mark and it's just nearly nothing isn't it one thing I haven't experimented with it's very very low mark and very low space because it's done by interrupts but uh, certainly the controller seems to be capable you know even if it's a little bit rough around the edges on the high frequencies, it's certainly capable of producing it. It's not miles away. We're above the RPM that we need, and we're an 88% mark. Can we increase the mark more? Let's go to 80%. Okay. So that's 94% mark, and it's 300. There we go. 96. Okay, so now it's basically lost the plot. That's <laughs> lit. Yeah, that's 98% mark. Get it back down. So that's that's 300. 300, and that if it was a six-step sequence, <coughs> that would that would be driving at 120 plus miles an hour. If it, if the motor was powerful enough to do it, our motor isn't. It's a 30 kilowatt. And as you can see. Well, the one thing it isn't doing is it isn't, uh, when I'm spinning it, I'm making interrupts happen from the sensors. So, yeah, which is a fair point. And for very small marks and very small spaces, what I could do instead is just simply put a for loop in there if it's below 10% or something. Yeah, okay. So, we're just testing the top end of the capabilities of the controller, basically. Seems okay.